Welcome to Biomed Buddy. Today we're going to discuss the syringe maintenance to the STA Compact. One of the major pieces of uh, maintenance that you perform on this unit. It's very easy to do, but by completing it, you help ensure that you get good accuracy and precision and good quality control. First we're going to hit Escape, get the main bar up, go over to Maintenance. I could have hit an M. Go to Maintenance. Go to uh, Syringe Tip Replacement. Tip or Syringe, of course. Um, tells you that you they want to make sure that you have a syringe tip or a new syringe. Hit F10. Unit is going to go to home so the needles are all over the wash well. You can change the tip of the syringe according to the procedure described in the manual, which we are going to be doing here directly. Um, and when this operation is finished, validate it, validate it by pressing F10. Now we are going to go over to the syringe and remove the syringe from the unit. Loosen the neural knob at the bottom. Loosen the neural knob at the top. Being careful not to break it. Or drop it. Now that it is removed, I can take it over to a, a bench and change my syringe tip. The syringe is one of the most important maintenance items that you can do to ensure you have proper quality control results and good precision. It is the number one thing that most field service engineers are going to look at when they come on to the site to see what your percentage is. Again, number one problem for quality control or precision is the syringe. Now, the syringe is very reliable. It will last you for years. I, do, I disagree with replacing these um, once a year. I have seen the syringes last 10, 12, 15 years on instruments and the precision of the instrument is great in fact. Now there are a couple exceptions on how a syringe um, becomes defective and we're going to talk about them here. Of course it, I'm obviously if they're broken um, they're, they're bad. However, we're going to change the syringe tip. This is the syringe tip. Um, we're also going to change the O-ring. First, let's start with the O-ring. It is simply pull off. And since it's a new O-ring, we're just going to put it right back on. And sometimes you might need to use some sort of wooden applicator or something if it's stuck on the bottom. But it's for all practical purposes, it's as simple as that. Now we're going to change this syringe tip. Pull the rod out. And there are three ways um, I'm going to tell you to change that tip. The right way. Take your fingernail, put it underneath this tip, pull. Very few people do that. And I am not going to do it that way. And there is reasons why that is the best way. And we'll, we'll discuss that. Second way I've seen people do is they take hemostats. And you can use hemostats to do it. I will tell you, you need to be real careful because there's some damage that you can cause, which is why we're having this discussion. My way, I went to Lowe's and got these wire strippers, and they have a little holes in them, so that, so that I, I'm hopefully I avoid the problems um, with the hemostats. And, of course, I use the biggest hole and try to grip it, and I pull straight out and remove the tip. Now... I'll go clear off the rest of that little junk. 
Now here's the problems, the issue with using hemostats and my tool, is the fact that there is a barb at the end of this rod. That barb is what keeps the syringe tip in place so that it does not come off inside the syringe. Without that barb, you're going to lose your syringe inside the tip, thus this rod scratches the inside of the syringe, thus you now have a bad syringe. For all practical purposes, that's the only way I see a, a syringe should go bad on you. When I do a preventive maintenance or whenever I change the syringe tip, I take my fingernail and I go completely around this little uh, barb to make sure that it's intact. I also check to see if that nipple has been bent because that's what happens if you take hemostats. You have a tendency to bend the end of this rod here and thus you'll get an uneven wear of your syringe tip. I am going to hold up the scraper to see if you can see that the change that one side that how that it is bent. Okay. Now keep keeping in mind that I would not put this back on like this. I'm going to continue to do my syringe maintenance. I'm going to take a tip all I do is reverse it, put it right in the middle on a hard surface, and push. My syringe tip is now in place. Okay, now that it is in place, you can probably see the bend that I'm talking about a little clearer. Now, again, this is a rod that I would throw out. I may keep the glass piece, but I would throw this rod out. I would not even try to fix it. One of the next things to do before you put the, the, the new tip into your syringe is to pour uh, saturate it with some water. This is extremely important because that will give it some lubrication so that you don't pre, um, so that you don't use up the syringe, uh, wear it out prematurely. I also fill the syringe. This is just my technique and I've been doing it this way for too long. I try to fill it so that I have no air bubbles. I have not seen air bubbles become any issue as soon as it goes through its uh, priming cycle um, the air bubbles are taken out. And, but, but this assures that I have water inside it so that I have, uh, don't again premature the, prematurely wear out the syringe tip. And there you go. I've now replaced the syringe tip. Now that we have completed the syringe maintenance, we're going to reinstall it on the instrument. It's relatively simple to do. Take the syringe, put it in position, tighten the neural knob at the top, Finger tight, doesn't have to be over tightened. Shouldn't have to take a wrench to get it back off. Not that that's ever happened. And here's where I think people make mistakes. I don't know that, but I think this. They go down and they start tight, they tighten the neural knob at the bottom. I am not going to do that. You're certainly welcome to. But what I believe happens is that when they tighten these down here, they, they're actually tightening them, and I'm over exaggerating it, at an angle. So you got a fixed spot here and a fixed spot here, and then when it pushes the syringe up, it breaks it. That's the only reason I could, uh, I can imagine how a syringe breaks right there. Maybe it breaks because people change the turning the barrel, I do not know. Bottom line, when you change, re replace it, Put the syringe, when you put the syringe back on, tighten the top, leave this one loose is what I would recommend, and then get your F10.
when the syringe is moving up and down, tighten the lower neural knob. That way it's kind of letting it uh, seat itself in the right position. And again, that does not have to be overly tight. Going back to unit, we have now completed the syringe maintenance, so we essentially want to exit and return to the um, main screen. At this point, if you go to the status screen, go to the systems, and you can see my syringe maintenance is now at 100%. Thank you very much for attending this session with Biomed Buddy on the syringe maintenance.